Today marks the relaunch of GN Extras, now featuring regular industry interviews. The man kicking all of that off is this guy, Mike Clark, Chief Architect at AMD. Internally though, his staff know him by a different name. You know, you've got a, a nickname around here, which is Father of Zen. There's another nickname <laughs> that the AMD team is trying to make stick. I just want to be clear, so do you prefer Father of Zen? Or Zen Daddy. One well, of the Zen Daddy thing is kind of new. It kind of hit me, but yeah, I'm I'm going to like it. Yeah, I can live with that. Previously, we met with Amit at the AMD lab and learned about how Zen's launch was make or break for the company. We were betting the company on right. Zen, and so like like Lisa came down, you know, and to, to preview the demo, and I just remember her her reaction. She was like. It's not really that exciting. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> We're like... And although we do technical interviews all the time, we also want to start cataloging some of the history. So with that backstory, we also brought our questions to Chief Architect Mike Clark to talk about the architecture and his experience in the trenches of early Zen. Despite its 2017 launch, Zen architecting started much earlier, and it began out of necessity of a now distant era. Okay. Yeah, we'd sort of been doing uh, the bulldozer... Yeah. Uh, thing. <laughs> sure. And Despite whatever's going on with Zen 5, there's no dispute that Andy's trajectory, starting with Zen 1, turned the company toward a much more positive path than with Bulldozer. But it wasn't always clear that Zen would be an AMD savior. You know, some people didn't, and so some people left. They didn't think we could do it. In this brief discussion, we'll learn more about the stories of Zen, speaking with Chief Architect Mike Clark, who has seen it through its entire journey, from Zen 1 through today. This interview is just meant to give some historical context for those who are really interested in what's going on in the industry and what it might be like to work in it. Let's get into it. So I did a video previously with the OC team at the AMD lab. And it was just a breakout video, it was really fun, where Amit told some stories about <laughs> the origin of the original Zen architecture. And so what I wanted to do for this was just some uh, retrospective stories of Zen. It's been long enough now, you could probably speak a little <laughs> more openly about things. And uh, you were just talking about Zen 5, and as cool as all that is, <laughs> yeah. I'd like to go back a little bit. So Amit's story was about the 18 megahertz post for, <laughs> for memory. Uh, do you have any particularly uh, <laughs> challenging moments that you, you guys overcame? Or? Well, I think, uh, yeah, and, you know, some, you don't know whether these are good or bad memories. They're certainly painful to uh, <laughs> to tell, to admit to people right. that these things were going on. But I do remember one one story I like to tell is, and I did, and I do. I like to go to lab. Back to those days, I spent a lot more time in the lab trying to get the original Zen going. Um, but we'd had some problems, so we needed to really cool the chip mm. to get it to work at all. Okay, and so we had found a recent bug, and one of the microcoders, I'm sitting there working, one of the microcoders pings me and is like, have you tried out the new patch yet? And I'm like, no, I'm wait the chip has gotten so cold, it's gotten wet, it gets co condensation, so I have to sit here and wait for it to dry before I can do anything and load the new patch in and see if it works. So was this cold <laughs> as in like sub-zero cold? Yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> What was what was the context behind that at the time? Just some problems with the process. <laughs> okay, I see. So it just worked better cold. It, yeah, it wouldn't work at all at, at, unless it was cold because of uh, yeah some was this problems uh, in the design. <laughs> was this Zen one? This is the original Zen. Okay. Yeah, so. so what? When did when did the actual concepting start for you? Because your your title, I guess, at the time and now, I don't know if it's still the same title or if. It, Corporate titles are weird to me. I don't understand yeah, yeah, them, but no, I was chief just, architect, right? I, I was I was the chief architect of Zen, which is how I get you know the father of Zen, right. <laughs> and, and you know like I said, and derivatives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so other things like it was funny, you know. Only also our own um, tools for debugging the chip. Mm. You know, think about you know how we were pushing the core count. Well, if you were debugging, and let's say you wanted to just refresh the state of the core. Normally with our older chips with, you know, whatever, four cores max, you just hit refresh, it update everything. These, the core counts were so high, if you forget and hit refresh, mm. 
you you have to go get a cup of coffee. Like <laughs> t there's so many cars, you just told it to go dump out all this information. <laughs> it's like, oh no, I did that again. Oh, let me go get a cup of coffee and wait for the tool to finally come back and tell me <laughs> the register state and stuff. First first public launch was 2017, yes. if I remember correctly. When did you actually like before you were even really working with the team to start designing things? When did the idea come to your head to work on Zen architecturally? Like when did that? I mean, it, wow, that's a that's a hard one to answer. I would say you know, sort of 2012. Okay. You know, we'd sort of been doing uh, the bulldozer yeah. uh, thing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and it was very you know we were kind of caught in that incrementalism. And, and, you know, we have been, like I said, that's kind of, it was earlier in that we've been trying to convince the business that, hey, you know, they were like, we need a new product every year. And it's like, we can't fundamentally mm. move the needle unless we have more time. And so, you know, when Mark brought in Jim, he helped convince the business that, hey, here's a, we have to do this. And here's a way, you know, we can survive in the meantime. Mm while we go and do a brand new architecture. It's needed, that's what we have to do. And, um, you know, sort of, we finally got, you know, we had, at that time we had, you know, the uh, Bobcat line and the Bulldozer line, which yeah. are interesting because they were like, at the two extremes of the market, sort of the you know, efficiency and the high frequency performance and like all the money's in the middle. <laughs> so right. then they were all <laughs> trying to fight their way back into the middle and they were not designed that way. And so, we kind of said we can't do, and we're struggling with this incrementalism. So it's like we need to do one brand new architecture. Yes, it has to span a lot. It has to be great in the middle, <laughs> right? Because that's where most of the money is, but extend it out. And so, yeah. So did you, was everything else kind of paused at that point? Because now what you guys are saying on stage earlier is there's this uh, configuration where you have kind of the, the team on the current thing and then the team on the next thing, in the very least. At that <laughs> yeah. time, uh, was there a team on the current next thing, or was it, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, I think uh, in the bulldozer line, our excavator mm -hmm. line was, hadn't been to production yet, so we, that was part of the plan, was mm -hmm. to still be able to deliver the end of the line there and, and be able to deliver products while and we were able to get this new team going on Zen, you know, and yeah. What does, I would say uh, one other thing I like to say, too, because, I mean, it's not, it's not just Zen, but if you even go back and look at, sort of uh, the original Zen, what we call HLD, high level design. I mean, you'll see it there, but so many things changed along the way we changed so much about it. You'll see the bones, but it's, it just, it, it's really hard, I would say, for our engineers. Like they wanna, when they go through our HLD, they, they wanna have everything set in stone. Mm. And I have to go back and remind them now, it's like, guys, look at Zen. You know what it, it, it ended up as? We're not going to know everything in HLD. You have to have, you know, flexibility in your process. <laughs> so that's sort of one of my questions is early in the, before 2017, you know, uh, on the silicon design side, how, how confident are you in a product sort of leading up to launch? Because uh, uh, there, there's got to be periods where it's a little fuzzy how it's going to perform in reality versus kind of on paper. But, you know, what was your, in the years leading to 2017, where was your confidence on Zen as an architecture? I, I'm always very optimistic. Mm. People, uh, maybe optimistic to a fault. I mean, because I love, I just love core design and innovation and, and, and the guys and the team. And, you know, you have a team around you that, that we kind of believe in. Now everybody, you know, some people didn't, and so some people left. They didn't think we could mm. do it. Mm. I think one of the bigger things was like, we were doing both SMT and an opcache for the first time, and people were like, there's no way you can do both of those things for the first time in a generation. It'll never work. It's like, well, we don't really have a choice. <laughs> if we're going to hit <laughs> what we need, it's sort of like we go out of business or we do this. Right. So let's do it. Do you guys want to go out of business? I don't. Well, that was <laughs> Amit's comment. When we, we did your video was, uh, I think the quote that we actually headlined was, we're betting the company yeah. on Zen. Yeah. And it's sort of, it's both that optimism and maybe the extreme realism is this mm. has to work. There mm. is no backup plan. Right. <laughs> right? We had bet it all on this. And so, not that I'm, I'm, I love to be in the lab, but I was in the lab probably the most during that generation because it was that critical 
to get done. And since then, with the success, you know, we've been able to grow the design team and grow the number of products. But it's still, every product is, and maybe not, you know, the company goes out of business if we don't deliver, but right. it's a huge problem <laughs> if yeah. we don't hit our schedules and deliver what we need. And we still live on that edge, not the edge of extreme yeah. out of business, but yeah, we're, we're always crazily on the edge. Someone told me to ask you uh, about the the word nirvana as it <laughs> relates to Zen. What? Why was I told to ask you that? So, <laughs> what does um, that mean in the context? Well, I would say that, you know, it's interesting because uh, we have internal code names. Actually, Zen was the internal code mm -hmm. name for the core. And to be honest, you know, I never really wanted it to be like movie mm -hmm. <laughs> Zen 2, Zen 3. I, I mean, I get how that's easy for everyone outside. So we still have internal names. And, you know, also at the time, you know, I, I set it up on stage today a little bit that even when doing Zen, I knew, you know, we could do much better. I knew we would need a new foundation. Mm -hmm. And I had this name in my head that you've referred to of that would sort of be, you know, the next, the real next generation where we really move the needle to a new foundation uh, and move for the future. So yeah, I had that back in 2013. That was kind of the plan. The hard part was like making sure I got it uh, into the right one when we were really going to do it. Mm. Right? You know what right. I mean? You did want to name some, put that name on something that wasn't going to be able to be an inflection point. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. so you already were you looking into Zen Five for that for Nirvana already? Can you see that? Yeah. Do you I have can, that I much mean, future I, sight? Well, I mean, I'm just saying you can just you just know yeah. that you know the insatiable demand for compute that the world has. Yeah, I mean, you can just go look at what's been delivered. It's like 40% compound annual growth rate mm. <laughs> in sort of two-socket servers. And it's different for different markets, but it's crazy. You know, number of cores, frequency, power efficiency, mm. IPC, it all adds up. And, and yeah, we've been able to deliver it. I think, you know, even you think about, you know, I'm reflecting today, you know, the seven years, mm. five generations, in the headwinds of everyone saying Moore's Law is dead and mm. the transistors we're getting are terrible, they're not scaling, <laughs> right. they're so expensive. And yet we've been able to deliver double-digit IPC every generation to really move the market. I mean, chiplets, obviously a big component to that, but that's what we have to do, right? That's what, you know, when you draw out, it's like, oh, you know, Moore's Law is dead, mm. so it, everyone thinks nothing's going to change. You, you discount the ingenuity and innovation of what engineers can do when they have to. Yeah. Because the world needs it and we're going to deliver it. So, so, so with, uh, for actual design to try and give the audience some perspective into what it is you do. <laughs> <laughs> what, it's like the office space. You know, what is it you do here? Uh -huh, right. uh, but when you're working on like the very beginning of a new architecture, uh, even if it's just we look at the original Zen, what is that? What are the processes? Is it all just a thought experience at first? Is it on paper, you know, <laughs> doodling things? <laughs> like how much of it is kind of computer and uh, projections and calculations versus just thinking? I mean, it, it's all of the above. I mean, I would say one thing. One thing we tended to do is at sort of inflection points, really, kind of get together and like. You know, you can you may notice that the odd ones tend mm. to be more from scratch, more <laughs> more change involved. And we kind of do that by design. Is that we try to go in with you know fresh minds, clean sheet of paper, but yet not forget. And so people come up with lots of ideas and say, oh, well that's one. But we could actually do that mm. uh, in the previous. We you know we could build that into kind of the kicker version or or an even generation. That'd be an easier change for that. Where this thing we thought of, oh my gosh, we're going to need to be changing everything to get there to make it all work. And that's kind of the, the, the art of it as well is that, and where I came up with the name of Zen is that balance component. It's, mm. it, well, it's you know, engineers would love to be like, okay, let's, let's reduce the risk. Let's just change this one block of the microarchitecture. Mm. And the next generation will change the next one and then the next one. But as you saw, we need to change everything 
otherwise the change you're putting in can't deliver. You know, it needs sure. to be a balanced architecture. And so you can't get caught in that trap of being risk adverse and we don't want to do too much here. That's and we'll progress. pick it up later. Yeah. 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 So you kind of got to swing for the fences at times. And, and sometimes you strike out and sometimes you hit a home run. But you just have to have a good batting average. It seems, yeah, it seems like the batting average is pretty good. I don't know anything about sports. I hope that I hope that's a compliment. Uh, but if it's not, I'm sorry. So uh, thank you for joining me. Really appreciate it. And we'll put the other video that we did on this topic in the description. Check that out. And we'll see you all next time.